All right, today is the day I'm going to tackle the upgrade to our lithium battery bank, Battleborn lithium battery bank to be exact. So the first step is really going to be to take out the two batteries in our step well, disconnect all of the uh, wiring and associated equipment in there, and uh, it'll be somewhat of a big job, but uh, shouldn't be terribly difficult. After that is relocate all four batteries back in the rear compartment, which is behind the rear a right rear uh, dually in a pretty large compartment there. That's where our uh, Victron um, inverter will end up going and all that other stuff. So let's take a look at how this goes. That's that. Not entirely easy. I mean, you know, just as you can see, I'm just trying to get those lithiums in and out of there. Uh, had to take pretty much everything apart. But I uh, wanted to get the chassis battery back in and get that hooked up. But uh, now, the process is really just kind of taking all of this wiring that I disconnected, all this stuff, and uh, you know, basically pulling all of it out. Uh, it's going to be rewired from the Shut, uh, solenoids, shut off solenoids all the way back to the uh, rear compartment. So that's where we are with all that. Stick around. Here's the new home for the four Battleborns. Um, I tried to kind to put them in a, two different configurations. This seems to work the best. I did go ahead and mount the um, shunt. So that's mounted there. Should be a good place for that. And uh, I do have all of the uh, different cables and stuff for solar and the Victron battery monitor come out of one location. I'm going to have to uh, fish those and route those back kind of behind here along the chassis and then um, run them in here the, the same hole that I'm going to run these uh, uh, positive and negative cables in and uh, should, should be pretty neat and tidy. And as always, I need another tool. Need a hole saw. I've got a wood hole saw, but not a metal hole saw. So I need to go to a big box store and buy a hole saw to cut a hole back here, and also plastic grommet to um, protect the wires. And then I'll seal all that up with some black uh, silicone sealant and get everything tied together. That'll be tomorrow. This is uh, turning out to be a little bit longer than I had anticipated, but uh, I like to take my time to get these things done right. So, we'll pick up there. See ya. Hey everybody, welcome back to day two of our Battleborn Lithium Battery um, relocation project. Um, yeah, it's a nice morning today. I had a little rain last night. Rained pretty good, so a nice cool morning here in uh, Arizona. So the plan today uh, plan today is to, to finish up uh, connecting the four lithium batteries. Uh, already did a preliminary run of the cabling. Got some other parts coming in this afternoon to kind of finish that up. All the corrugate, corrugated uh, cable protectors, uh, some heat shrink, things like that. Some 8 gauge wiring to run from the controller down to the battery bank. And um, so that'll come in this afternoon, so it'll be a little bit. Uh, uh, chunky. I'll get the first part done this morning. I have to wait a little bit till those parts come in through a wonderful Amazon. But anyway, let's uh, take a look at what we have to do here this morning and then we'll get started.
the batteries are installed. Probably not the optimum installation. Of course, you know, every installation is different. You know, daisy chaining uh, these together in the way I did. I uh, always wanted to make sure that, you know, it's drawing from, from all the batteries versus one battery. So uh, that's how I connected everything up. Uh, definitely, if, uh, you know, it's the work I have to do still. I wanted to get these all hooked up and get them tested to make sure that, uh, you know, they were working properly. Everything registered uh, in our control panel properly, which it does. And on the Victron BMS, uh, everything registers fine. Uh, updated the, the battery capacity to uh, reflect the 400 amp hours now uh, on the Victron. I am going to uh, remove all these cables uh, and put shrink wrap on there again. I ordered that, so it's doing this afternoon. But again, wanted to get this all hooked up. The heat shrink is done, and uh, I don't know about you, but for some reason there's something strangely cathartic and uh, relaxing about putting heat... One more thing in the project is uh, installing this split wire loom along the positive and negative cables that I ran along the chassis just to add some extra protection. And in addition, I'll uh, use some wire ties to tie things together and secure things so they don't dangle and uh, ultimately fall down. All right, so I'm using another camera, our little Canon G7X, to kind of get underneath here. It's a little easier to... Uh, work with in small spaces so I'm going to start at the front and kind of work my way to the rear. change of plans on my system to anchor these batteries or uh, restrain the batteries. You know, I talked about um, you know building a strap around here and I may still do that uh, but I think for the time being I just don't have enough time today to get this done. Um, so I'm just going to put a couple cleats in here, two by four cleats. Uh, it'll, it'll keep them from shifting around and, and, and work fine in the interim. Yeah, but ultimately I do want to put that strap as a deterrent uh, at the top, you know, like I spoke about earlier. Um, I think this will work. It should be fine. Drill a few holes, pilot holes, and then anchor straight to this uh, metal box, metal compartment. I think it'll be okay. All right, that was pretty easy. I think those are gonna stay in place just fine uh, until I, again, find a better solution, uh, ultimately that strapping system like I was talking about. Another cool thing about moving these batteries to this location back in this storage compartment from where they were underneath the stairwell where it is totally open to the environment. No heating whatsoever, so subject to all those uh, environmental uh, temperature swings and such, is that this compartment, and I didn't know this, uh, is heated. So there are little louvers or little little spaces here in this bay in this compartment where heat actually comes out when the heater is on. So there's a, a number of them up in here and one back here and another one back in here. So what that means is you know I, I did go inside and confirm I turned the, the furnace on the blower and put my fingers in here and I could tell there was a little bit of airflow coming out of here so at least it'll provide a little bit of um, 
you know, heating during cold months. Uh, that is, if you have the heater on, the furnace on. And sometimes we don't run the furnace, we just run a little um, a ceramic heater, um, a wave, it's a wave six actually, it's not a ceramic, it's the um, propane heater. Uh, so that won't do this any good. But, um, yeah, anyway, when I do have the furnace on, it's nice to know that this will be somewhat warmer than typical uh, outside ambient temperature. Well, I know this video was a little uh, chunky. Kind of ran into some technical issues with some of the footage I shot. If you like the video, give me a big thumbs up. If it's your first time here, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified as soon as another one of our videos comes out. And if you have any comments, just uh, put them below. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. So I think that about wraps it up. Until next time, see ya.